Hello again everyone, Melf here. New thumbnail style, same Baldur's Gate 3 challenge run. Let me know what you think. Details of the challenge are in the video description as usual. Watch out for spoilers throughout this run. So, here we are back at the group about to talk to various people about how we've brought Halcyn back and saved the tieflings from the goblins. I, should I don't think Findle has much to say about that. Let's just check. Peace is returning to the grove. Oh, we have you to thank for that. Well, Findle has nothing to say, but Tibalt, my cat, is trying to claw his way through a closet door. Let me pull him away from there. Alright. A sentence of banishment from the office has been pronounced upon him. Need to find a way forward. Let me Let's see. go up to where the rest of the druids are. I could randomly attack the rest of these druids here, but I can't really just fight that in character, and my challenge is to fight all enemies rather than fight every single person regardless of what side they're on. I sided with the druids, not, you know, against them. They're also just, like, not much of a threat. Kill them all in one or two shots apiece. So... Not really missing out any kind of challenge by not randomly attacking them. The goblins are gone, but so is our idol. We are exposed without it. The idol was just a crutch. The real power of Sylvanas was inside you all along, because, you know, you're druids, and that's literally true. We wasted so much time What am I even other. talking to now? Sylvanas there we go. A lesson by letting an outside this guy in particular always seems to have kind of buggy conversations when we talk to them. I hear the goblin leaders met their ends. Unfortunate for them, but very fortunate for the grove. I think Orm is down below there, that bear that was depressed that Halcyon was gone will be happy now that he's back. I believe you even get XP for reporting the little quest to him, basically. He's back! You brought him back! Yeah, a little tiny bit. Okay. You're curious. You've got a great many odors about you. This is the one that was talking to what Volo before. He listens, rapt, hanging on every word. As you near the end of your tale, you see his attention drift as he licks his lips, thinking about something else entirely. I think that's about it for interesting conversations in here. Calm down, thanks to you. The lighting is making this guy look pretty weird, I think. He does have, like, greenish skin, which is unusual even for a wood elf. These three will depart. We'll see them again in Act 2, of course, and rescue them again. Once apiece. Actually, no, we didn't rescue Lisa before, so I'm being unfair to them. But it seems you managed well enough. Although he deserves it. Arrogant twit. Where a butcher's blade will do. My thanks, truly. It was you, right? We took care of the goblins. I knew you were a good one. Oddly enough, we're allowed to loot these supplies. It feels pretty odd that some things you can take from them and some things that are stealing. Even go through their treasure chests. They don't mind. We couldn't have held them back on our own. Thank you. Poor Ikarun will get killed pretty shortly, I think. Oh, a smoke powder bomb. Don't mind if I do. Yeah, maybe it's my fault half of them die because I took all their supplies and weapons. But, no, there's no saving them. Which is a little bit irksome. Next soon to begin. Octus one who gave us gruel before. To worrying about road rations it is. This is like a nice moment all in all where, you know, you've saved these people and you can talk to all of them and then they're at the party and so forth. It just... I wish there was a way to actually save most of them instead of them just killing themselves in the stupidest possible way going to the Shadow Curse area. We made it somehow. Now we just need to get to Baldur's Gate. Maybe go by, you know, the smart route. Down the river or around, not through, like, Mordor. You killed all the goblins and now we can't practice swords anymore! you still got one on your back. What's it even attached to? You don't have... I mean, I know that back... Scabbard type stuff is nonsense that was historically pretty much never done, but he doesn't even have that. He just has it, like, stuck to his naked back somehow or other. I knew this would come right if we just stayed positive. Not that your blade didn't help, too. God, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. 
hope the next I forget if Dennis. I think Dennis needed to rescue for him to make it. We have to do a lot of separate tiefling rescues. I'm Mattis will soon be an actual merchant with actual goods. No discounts once I'm running the wide of Boulder's Gate, mind. Come to think of it, did I give Mattis any money to improve attitude? Looks like I can't right now. That's fine. Might not be worth it anyway. So over here they have a lot of goods that are stealing to take, but they include some pretty good stuff. Panderna will be fine even if you haven't cured her somehow or other, so that's nice for her, I guess. I did cure her in this case. You stopped the goblins. Thank you. With the goblins dead, we might actually make it to Baldur's Gate. And this is the grave of the dead Tiefling that was shot by goblins at the beginning. I'm sorry I wasn't there to help. That'll change from now on. I've got... I not actually talk to you? Okay. So, in terms of seeing the steel here, I really want the smoke powder bombs because those are rare and valuable. Magical arrows and whatnot are nice. Of course, I wouldn't steal it in character, but a Starian probably would. So, off we go. Arm yourselves. Better to have a weapon and not need it. Don't touch me. So we've got smoke powder bomb, smoke powder bomb. It's going to be hard to see things with once I put down a fog cloud, so I want to just scout where they are now. Arrows of fire and roaring thunder are over there on the ground. And then scrolls of firebolt and darkness. Okay. We did it. Volcan Uber! I did it! He'd be proud of you. I know he would. I'm, I'm sorry I wasn't there to help. Okay, somewhere around here in the fog is where the arrows were. There we go. Roaring Thunder is the rarer and more useful one of them. Fire is nice too, of course. Fire bolt. And... Our darkness was around here somewhere. Let me also just turn on dash like that. There we go. Nice and easy. Pretty good use of a fog cloud single level spell slot, I think. In any case, so I've mentioned before that I'm going to be forced to go to the tiefling party here and rest. But I'm going to avoid getting any actual benefits from that rest by injuring my own party members. The reason I have to do it is that if I skip it, Halson just won't ever actually show up in camp, so I can't do his whole questline in Act 2, and I'll miss out on a bunch of tough fights there. So I've got to do this rest and have this party, but then what I'll do is I'll make sure every party member gets injured, or waste spell slots in it back where they were before. Have you no respect for showmanship? Having performance issues, Roland. Hush you, and behold! Everyone throughout the plot will be extremely impressed by this guy. But he's really pretty mediocre. He's even supposedly better than the Great Wizard Leroicon, but, like, he's really not, so... Now, pass the wine. Troglodytes, besides just literally meaning cave dweller in Greek, are an actual critter in D&D. They're kind of these very, very smelly lizard cavemen type people. Look at them all. Guzzling poison like we've the right to be happy. Not everyone. We lost people, and it's like they don't even care. But I care. And I won't drink myself into a stupor to change that. Withers is here, not partying, of course. Think of it. No more caves, no more tents, no more running away. We'll be in a city with roads and markets and homes. First you need to not get killed on the road, which you could do if you went the smart way. He's all red, I think, because the star and drank his blood earlier in the day, and as we all know, being short on blood, like after you donate blood, makes you just have a glowing red aura. Happens to me every time. 
Ah, hells. I was hoping you wouldn't notice I was gone. Really? I'm honored. In truth, I don't feel in a festive mood, and I didn't want to cast a gray cloud over the night. I'm a devil. I love the people. I keep saying that, although he's still a humanoid type. We could totally just saw those horns off, I feel like. As I seem to unsettle everyone nowadays, you don't want to put a hat on him. your party. Horns this sharp will pop the balloon. I do like that line, although it seems odd, because as far as I'm aware, there wouldn't have been balloons in this time period. Ouch. You don't need to mock me when I'm feeling low. But, off with you. This is your day. Have a dance. Enjoy the music. Some time alone beneath the stars, and I'll be back to my old self. Promise. Still, it's a night to remember. You've made I do like a lot of the conversations with companions here. They all have a good chance to show their personalities and whatnot. Most of them will be in a somewhat more than a festive mood, which will feel either appropriate or inappropriate narratively, depending on what kind of relationship That's conversations you've had with them up to this point. Or possibly turn it. <laughs> so here in this conversation, Infernal is made up words, whereas every other time it's just Latin for some reason. Thank you. There's that confidence I like. I thank you for seeking me out. Amid all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. I was hoping you'd spare me a moment. There was something rather magical I wished to show you. A lesson. And trust me when I say few have experienced the pleasure I offer to teach. However, it's something best experienced in more... Intimate surrounds once the revelry has ended and the stillness of the night has been restored. I think Bolus is only interested in Gale as a friend, but he is curious what this wizard has in when mind. Done, I will show you all. There's Alfira alive because of that complicated rigmarole of knocking her out before. It might be the head injury talking, Alfira. I am sorry about that. I'm writing my next song about you. But I need an angle. Any ideas? I like this line. But of course. But you achieved something far beyond mere fact. That deserves to be remembered. Oh, she's still mad at me because of the... So she's giving me there won't be another warning message. Many more like this. Yeah, their attitude toward you can be very different from their conversation. Now, don't waste a night like this talking to me. We'll have plenty of time together on the way to Moonrise. In truth, I rarely imbibe. The stuff goes right to my head. Before you know it, I'd be breaking into song or declaring love to the first person I laid eyes. That sounds like you sober, Halson. Then you have never heard me singing, which makes you very fortunate. Go on, enjoy yourself. Seek out some wine before it runs dry. There are a lot of thirsty people around here. Mole over there is still possible to steal the idol from at this point if you wanted to. I've already taken care of that. The singing we could probably do without, but even so, thank you. I thought I remember there being a tiefling over here too, but I guess not. He stole the idol. If I find out who it was, I'll recruit him. <laughs> He's not really interested in talking to Lei Buangzhou because he hates her. What are you going to do in the city? Oh, there's always work. He doesn't like a story much either. I never pictured myself as a hero. Never thought I never pictured you as a hero either, Astarian. And now that I'm here, I hate it. This is awful. 
We killed some goblins to save some tieflings. The tally of lives didn't change much. I mean, goblins aren't worth anything. A pat on the head and vinegar for wine. It's a heavy, rich red. Dry and sharp. See what I mean? Awful. All I want is a little fun. Is that so much to ask? Bala Sikkin does not like this guy very much. I was hoping for companionship. And, well, maybe a little death. Figuratively speaking. And not with you, just to be clear. I mean... Can you imagine? Interesting. <laughs> I've never had him actually no. not be interested in my character at this point. But Velissa hates him anyway. anyway. Don't let me keep you. I'm sure you have someone else to sniff around. How low did my relationship value with him end up being anyway? Usually no matter what I've done at this point, I'm at like 30 or something like that, which is apparently enough for him. No, only 19. Huh. It's what you get for, you know, not being pure evil. Le Zell likes him anyway. These things have stayed interesting. But I guess the starring is pretty much the evilest party member. I don't even want to talk to that shard worshipping filth over there. I guess you're having a party with all the animals and whatnot here. All these people happy because of us. It's nice. Did Afira just vanish into thin air back behind me? Possible. Take you and Gale, for instance. Don't think I haven't noticed the sparks flying. He's a good egg. A little scholarly for my taste, but I'm sure you could crack his spine like a new book. What a strange remark. Good to see the two of you getting along anyway. At least one of us is getting a little action. Though... You know... If you wanted to meet up later, maybe we could... Meet up? Later? <sighs> you know, I've never actually had any kind of option here with Gorlak. I wonder what the deal is here. I'm not sure Barlissa is actually interested in her because she's a strange devil woman who we're told smells like Avernus because of her engine, probably. Which I feel like in character would probably be repulsive. I ever talked to Ikron? I think we've made the rounds in that case. So, I should now take some time to take notes about what HP and stuff and so forth everyone is at. I have so, Ballista is down one Bardic Inspiration. Alright, I've got my notes about what HP level everyone is at and things like that. So, off to bed. So, Ballista will have to choose between Gale or Karlak. You can't have both interactions. Really, he's not feeling super comfortable with either of them. He likes them both, but only as friends, and barely feels like he knows Karlak at all. Seek. Gale really seemed to have more than magic tricks in mind with the way he phrased things, and Valsa is not quite sure what to say to Gale, and feels like it would be very awkward to tell him that he's not quite interested. As for Karlak, he feels like it'll be easier to talk with her at the very least. Your heart skips a beat. He also wants to find out something else, which is... He has a somewhat controversial idea in mind and wants to know what Karlak would think about it before he takes any kind of rash action tomorrow. Hey, a soldier. Very private location here. Right in the middle of camp, right by the fireside, surrounded by everyone. Hello, you. I've been waiting for this all night. Isn't it mad? How good life is. You know, I don't think he means this in the sense of he really wants to be with Karlak in particular, so much as just that, you know, her imminent death makes him think about how good life is. Thank the gods. I was afraid I was the only one. Ten years he, of course, has a great deal of sympathy for her about this, but he feels like he barely knows her. Ten years without a kind word. A touch. When I look at you, I feel real again. Alive. Gods, I want to ride you to you. And stars. she's gone too far because, again, we barely know each other. <laughs> Not true. I know you're a goblin destroyer, an adventurer, 
And most importantly... Very superficial things about what he's just been doing. But he is reassured that you focus in on goblin butchering and things like that. He sees that as a sign that they do both share a common contempt for all these little murderous evil gremlins in the world and in our party. Honey, when I look at you, my brain turns to mush. He might just try to defuse things a little bit, as it were, but just offering one kiss and then hoping that'll be the end of it for now. It's a charcoal. Guaranteed. It's trivial to cool her down with things like water bottles, but I guess her brain has turned to mush, and she won't think of that. We can try, but don't hurt those pretty lips of yours, all right? They feature heavily in my future plans. Good thing his beard doesn't catch fire or something. Shit! Are you all right? He's gonna hope that she won't actually take him up on this offer. That certainly hurt. You can't make me be the responsible one. I'll destroy us both. So, what do we do now? That's a good point, though. He's gonna need to take responsibility for everything in this party, as far as he can tell, because he's surrounded with a few reasonable people like Will and Gale, but even Gale kept important secrets could have blown us all up. Please. And then there's the pure evil ones, and then there's Karlak, who's well-meaning, but just really dumb. Maybe even a little too much. I better head back to my bunk. You might not be able to touch me, but you give me a lot to uh, think about. Your bunk, which is two feet away. I trust you enjoyed your evening. We've already had most of this conversation with Halson, I think. A lot of it's going to be just verbatim the same as it was when we're talking to him in Goblin Camp. I think there are maybe a few different lines. I might go through parts of it again. There is much to be done. Moonrise Towers beckons. I've told you all I know. And now I'll join your camp to help you face whatever's... It really would be nice if he joined our party, like he's saying he would, but he doesn't. Until we are basically midway through Act 2. I think he should just join us now. That would be a chance to develop his character more, and it makes sense, really. There is a terrible curse surrounding Moonrise Towers. This is very clearly the work of Shar, of course. All light and life. And like hell, he's bringing Shadowheart, an active worshipper of Shar, who wants to help Shar into that cursed area, which already wants to take the artifact away from us and give it to Shar worshippers. You go under. There is a tunnel. Again, his advice about going under is useless. Right down into the underdark and beyond. The Temple Saloon that we saw looted and destroyed by Shar Worshippers is also weighing heavily on Ballista. Entrance, you'll discover a route that leads to Moonrise Towers. Aradin and his lot were looking for the same. Oh, we've been through that part before. We've already even told them this part too. I would like to join your camp. I've yes, to join us. Moonrise Towers. May Sylvanus guide us. But he won't actually join us. Patient to move on as Halson. As ever. Shut up, you tall, stretched-out goblin. Priority. All right, so let's get ourselves weakened back to the way we were. So let's see. I got back one Warlock spell slot, but it did have Hex active before, and I was forced to deactivate that prematurely to do that camp scene, so if I just recast that, this should put me back to the way I was. I have the same amount of hit points because I was above half, so nothing got restored, so that should be fine. I hadn't spent any Bard spell slots anyway, so that's also fine. I probably should spend some of those in the coming day. Got a long road ahead. I guess I'll have him take over doing the fairy fire for a bit, since uh, I've taken that some of Lazel's wisdom away, so she's less good at it. Good. Now, Karlak also doesn't get back any uh, hit points, so that's good too. Didn't get that back, so that's fine. Okay, great. She should probably cast False Life on herself again, because she had that before, and that got you know, cancelled off. So, I lose a few scrolls for this first re forced rest, basically, but that's okay. I listen to my elixirs too, which is less okay, but oh, it'll be all right. Blood. Now, I was out of wild shift before, but I had my symbiotic entity going, so if I just cast that again, that'll be back to the way I was, so that's fine too. I don't think you got back any spell slots, so that should be okay. Looks like everyone has got back nothing, so all right, we're good. 
Now let me... Oh, you have garbage spells prepared. Why in the world is that the case? Let's fix that up, shall we? Okay, silence. We have people who can cast it, but we want to have more. I want to recast eight. Unfortunately, that got purged off of me by the rest. I don't think I have another scroll of it, so I'll prepare that one. And then I mean, this would be tempting, but I probably need to have a concentration be used on other things instead. Old person, like when you want it, you really want it. So maybe command is like a must to have. Bless is great. Sanctuary is great when you need it. This is a nice emergency spell, so we should probably prepare that too. You've already got Shatter for a decent level 2 blast spell, so we're probably okay on that front. We've got scrolls for that. Yeah, maybe we'll just take Guiding Bolt in case I did like a slightly stronger blast at some point. It could happen. And let's unprepare... Magic Missile for now. Maybe prepare Magic Weapon instead. And we can cast that, perhaps, on a star again. Why does he reel as if he was hurt there? Let's also switch this party order up. I want to remember, basically, not to use Carlax Guidance anymore, because that would end her concentration on Magic Weapon. We don't want that. I'll probably also take this amulet off you, because it always slows things down when I'm having you cast Guidance. You know who could do it comparatively safely? Probably a Starian. But he might want to actually use that uh, Broodmother's Revenge thing. I could also cast Scene Invisibility. Now that you, know, you have a wizard level and you have a wizard level, that's okay either way. So let's do that on you, just so we have two party members who've got it. That way, if there's an invisible enemy, they have to make two saving throws against it. <laughs> Action, not reaction. Let me also cast Long Strider on everyone. far. See, that's one reason that I don't often cast a level 3 version of it. When you try to cast the higher level version of it, instead of walking toward the target and just casting on them as you would want, uh, they'll won't budge an inch if the person's not already in reach. So it's not always faster compared to just casting it manually on each target. Nothing hurt. We should probably also reactivate your dexterity knowledge that you'd had the night before. I have a lot on my mind. And well, in it. All right, you're missing temporary hit points. Once you get a kill, that'll be okay. I think everyone is missing their elixirs, so we should try to fix that if we can. And also, you're missing your potion of animal speaking. Let's see, animal speaking. And you're missing your mage armor. I know someone has that. Mage? No. Mage? I know someone's got. It. There we go. Mage armor. Oh, I could go for a good meal. Okay, now for elixirs. I can give either Bloodlust or Vigilance to Ballista. Both are pretty solid now. I might go with Bloodlust now that he has two cantrip attacks, but, you know, getting him to actually win initiative is also pretty important. Let's pass that next one to Astarium. We definitely want that for him. And then who's got the Hill Giant ones? I'm not sure those are necessarily the best thing anymore for uh, the other two casters now that they have the ability to cast cantrips that are about as strong as their throwing weapons anyway, but the accuracy of Hill Giant's strength is pretty good too. I could of course give them Bless Elixirs, but I have the ability to just cast Bless when I need it, so I'll probably drink these while I've got them, and then when the supply runs out, I won't worry about it, basically. Alright, is that everyone back to the way they had been, in terms of spells and buffs prepared? I'm probably forgetting, like, one thing. I know there's still aid to do, but I plan to recruit Blut back into the party before I cast that, so... No, oh, not camp. Actually, one other thing to do in camp. I guess I should just have a story and uh, bite someone. Doesn't really matter. I could just have him bite like the first goblin of the day or whatever, but let me just save time here and just take care of it now. No one stopped me yet. Okay, let us leave camp. And let us go down to the Underdark and the Mike in the Town to report success to the Sovereign. Now, whoever reports success of killing the Dwarger gets the Bliss Spores buff for the rest of that day, which is pretty powerful. Basically, plus a d6 every d20 roll you make, which is really nice. 
I could give that to a story to make him basically never miss his sharpshooter attacks, and that would be pretty viable. Or I can give it to Balissa, who makes the most checks of all. I'll probably do that. It greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. There were only like four Dwarver left. Your market is probably going to take them out, you know? New harmony. Serenity. I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through. There'll be a very similar buff available in Act 3 if you save a nymph from a mind flare. It's also called Bliss there, I think. Same buff of plus a d6 to everything, I believe. Freely you may take. The Guardian So we get their treasure over there, which is nice. Go and claim your reward. But before this, I have another boon to ask of you. You have cut out the Dwergar blight, but not its source. In your mind's eye, Spore shows you a drow striding... So we had a dialogue option about Nier before for some reason, but this is the first time we're actually this one is hearing his name. So that was kind of a bug. He hunted us. Hunted so he calls us Peacebringer, then asks us to go off in some other territory and kill some guy. And I will know my circle is safe. I'm more than happy to kill this... whoever he is. But tell me there's something in it for us. I ask a boon, and will give one in return. It's not quite Ballista's point, but I guess that is what a star was asking about. Beyond the, lake. the reward for this is nowhere near as good as the reward we just got for killing the Dwergar. But given that they're across the lake, that means that they must be related to the people who were enslaving her folks. So Balissa does want to deal with that for that reason. Let me redisguise myself now, by the way. And then I should be careful how I walk down to where Glut is waited because I don't want to trigger one of the trap mushrooms. Oh, why don't you turn invisible while we're at it? Now, Dareth over here will have a new inventory because I rested, but I didn't want to do that rest. That was a forced rest the game imposed on me. I don't want to benefit from it, so I won't talk with her and won't look at her new inventory. I should speak up. Eliminate Spore. How about your circle pays for its failures? Alright. You've got... Do you have Long Shredder active? You do have Long Shredder still active, but you don't. So let's get Long Shredder cast on. Now that everyone's together, let's have you cast Aid. There we go. Out of second level spell slots, but we're getting some good use out of them, I think. So, should be okay. Let's get going. If not over, then through. Alright. So, off we go on our next adventure. We were told that possibly a cure leading to a parasite could be found, or... Communicating with it from this mind flare, rather, could be found if we went to hereabouts and hunted for some rare mushrooms. So, let's go to the beach, and then have a look around for that. Oh, was this the ladder that the closest way out? I think it was. Yeah, up here to the carrion crawler holes. One person asked, by the way, why I use a Hokoru rather than a Minotaur. They're both pretty comparable. I would not say that a Minotaur is a bad choice by any means. They're quite strong. I'd say actually they have slightly better combat stats than a Hokoru. But the Hokoru has a much longer range jump, and I find that to be pretty valuable. But if you want to use a Minotaur instead, like, that's a great choice. Of course, you can eventually get the Bulet or some other super strong creature, but... For now, at least, while we don't have that as an option, I think that the Hokoru or the Minotaur are probably the best bets. Another Bulat fake out. I am, as I said before, trying to give it a chance to be patched, because from what I've heard, it doesn't have its honor mode abilities working properly yet, so it won't be as challenging as it's supposed to be. So I plan to wait until hopefully they have patched it, or until I kind of have to fight the Bulat because of where I'm going. One, whichever one comes first. 
So we were spotting a spot down here where there are all these mushrooms growing, and Ballista is hoping, incorrectly, that we can find the mushrooms we're looking for down there in the depths of the Underdark. This is a pretty secret area with some fun stuff going on, which a lot of people have not apparently heard of. I often mention this to people and they mention they don't know where that is or have never heard of this encounter. So, maybe a rare treat up here. Alright, Festering Cove. These boots have seen everything. Up ahead there we see a bunch of Kuo Toa. Apparently busy worshipping and not paying attention to their surroundings. Now, I think when we actually get in a conversation, we get a check about the Kuo Toa to tell us they're worshipping false gods that they give power to, but I'm going to assume that Ballista actually knows that already. So this gives him an idea. He's been thinking about several things lately. You know, originally he thought that he was like Lei Boing Zell or Starving, because he has murderous urges, but he realizes that he's better than them. They give in to those urges, whereas he resists them. He's not really like they are. He's more like Karlak and Gale, which is kind of... There's another external force that makes him dangerous, but he's trying to resist it. He also is thinking something else, which is that we have this awful Shar worshiper with us who's a definite enemy, as far as she told us so far. And we're going into Shar cursed territory. That's not a good idea at all. The Underdark used to be Shar territory. So, he might decide this is a good chance to ridicule Shar and get rid of an enemy at the same time. He's going to take Shadowheart here and offer her as a sacrifice to this false evil god of the Kuotoa. Still breathing. Despite that will hopefully help keep the tall goblins in line, because they only seem to you know, understand the threats of violence, just like Minthara's goblins. Are you sure that's the best course of action? Confirm She's friendlier about this now, because he's gotten to a better attitude level with her. I remain. Have to keep going. And let's go and fetch Shadowheart. Some time to talk. Sir Gale's been walking around this whole time with some sort of magic bomb in his chest. Yeah, I mean, admittedly he shouldn't have kept that secret from us, but like, don't even pretend that's equal to what secret you were hiding. You worship a goddess who's literally trying to destroy the entire world and everything in it. Alright, some company wouldn't hurt on the road. Now, of course, I know out of character that she was brainwashed and that she can get this redemption arc and whatnot, but we don't know that in character. In character, she's a definite enemy at this point, and proud of it. Now, let's level her up so that she'll be at least a little bit of a fight, although for the rest of the party, she'll be a pushover. I guess we should give her some clothes, too. Ah, oh, this part won't matter. Uh, alert, so she's the chance to win initiative, I guess. I want to make her challenging for us, and... I guess this will matter more when we get to level 3 and she can pick a better spell. There we go. That's the most dangerous cleric spell of them all, so we'll give that to her. What do we have to equip her with? Can I group them to meet conveniently? No, I guess not. Okay. Uh, we don't have any spare shields. Okay. I don't know. It's not going to matter very much. Is she proficient with mauls? Maybe not. Maybe she should give her something she's proficient with. And I don't know, here's that magic armor to wear. Whatever, let's not waste any more time on this. Dash and meet. Silly dark urge lines there. Breathe deep and move. Seems like a good moment to talk. How blood to fill your oceans! Oh, blessed Bohal! Our bones to build your temple in the deep! A wave of peace. It's a pretty silly scene, but I do kind of enjoy it nonetheless. And with every surge, you feel a presence grow in Oh, you know, I forgot to claim my reward from the Myconids. I should do that next. Priest, promises your god! So this is clearly a red cap that's been powered up by these Kuotoas. And we all know that red caps just love blood and murder and whatnot. You, our lord of murder demands sacrifice. 
You will be an offering for the great god Boal. <laughs> That's so, Cutlet. I'm a god, and I fancy a bit of murder. Simple enough. Well placed. Guar wants a sacrifice. Guar wants blood. Oh, what's that then? See. You can't sacrifice a hireling, by the way. Only sacrifice a permanent party member. Better not do Gale or lose the entire game a couple short rests later. Well, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I just got out of devil hell. I'm not going to fishy hell anytime soon. I want to wake up beside a handsome virgin every morning, but life doesn't give us what we want. Can we kill this god now? It's simple. Make an offering or become one. You can sacrifice yourself first, you spineless rat. Oh, so she gets to do pretty well on initiative, but that's fine. We gave her alert so she'd have some chance of going first and being a threat to us. is my happy place. Good know that Karlak has my back here. So we get a permanent but very minor and unimportant buff from now on for the rest of the party. It's not really like worth it out of character. I just had never had a chance to play with that buff before. And Shadowheart would leave the party anyway because I wouldn't be doing her quest the way she wants. My blessing. So, I wanted to just try out this new buff, and in character, of course, my character would have a reason to get rid of Shadowheart. Now, for my challenge, of course, I do need to actually go ahead and kill this guy anyway. But, our new buff is, until we die, basically, which will then take it off of us, we have advantage on attack against bleeding creatures. But bleeding is really a pretty rare status, so that doesn't matter very much most of the time. There aren't many ways to inflict it on enemies, either. What's in your... Uh, supply sack. Yeah, whatever. Alright, we'll take that back. And that. And that. This is what we think of Shar. As dumb a god as their Buol. And just as self-destructive to worship. Okay, let's go back and get Lei Buang's out. I'm going to assume that in character she was here for this, basically. What path lies before me? Hmm. Just thought of something. But, you know, Bolas's basic message to the evil party members is essentially that you can't trust each other. You know, Saurian just said that he wanted to fight against this god, but he was happy to fight against, you know, Shadowheart instead. It is done. And the good party members will definitely side against you if you give us a reason to. So, stay in line and be useful, or end up sacrificed to fish gods. Alright, so let's go ahead and get ready to fight them. As long as at least one lives, even if it's knocked out, that allows us to keep this buff. Didn't I just try to ungroup you? Whatever. Fine, everyone come up then. A lot on my mind. And, well, what is a good and fair way to start the fight now? Without getting too big an advantage. But why do you have two ravens? Uh okay, that's weird. Okay, I think that's just like a bug of how it's displaying. Interesting. Alright, let's just start the fight in a small way, but just pecking one of these guys so that we don't get too big an advantage, as I was saying. Excuse you, says this fish creature. Okay. Anyway, you might notice that Buol was you know, vanished until this point, but now he's back, so that's fine and good. How much movement that cost you? A decent amount, but you can probably get away with that and come back, so we'll try it. Ah. 
Alright, you have already used your action, but you can fly away because that guy has a ranged weapon, so that's fine. Uh, can't find path. How about the straight line path right down there? There we go. Ah, provokes an attack. So I better kill off that one. Now, a spike growth here can demolish these guys, but they are pretty easy in general, so that might not be necessary. Alright, what are you stuck behind? There's lots of guys in the way, I guess. How about we have... Can you throw that guy? No? Okay. Maybe you throw that guy. Oh, come on, really? But it still worked? Okay, weird. Does that let my birds get out of there as I hoped it would? Okay, that one's out. Can that one evac safely? Yes, okay. Now, if we kill Buol, that then I believe imposes penalties on all the rest of them. This is probably also a good chance to just blow them up with a bomb or something, though. Survival is all that matters. All right, too much stuff is in the way here. If I get a kill, that will then give me an extra action. So if I maybe activate a shatter here. That seems like a decent use of it. All right, got my extra action, so that's nice. Probably take out you and most likely you with these two blasts. Be able to split them up is pretty nice. All right, now of course the important target is Bual. We also want to make sure that you get an extra action to start in, so let's see how this goes. Good start. If you throw maybe a spear at Bual, or let's keep a javelin for simplicity's sake. Should do some extra fall damage most likely. Yeah, not bad. Alright, so I'm pretty confident now that you can finish him off. With any kind of decent luck. Do you have... you do have that going. Okay, great. Red Ambusher, very good. This might just kill now with, like, average damage. Below average. That's fine. Let's finish him off with your weakest shot. Okay, oh, we got a kill, and we've scared all those guys. So I think the Kuotoa Hunters have the ranged attack, so they're probably the ones we want to focus down next. I think. Those ones will probably be stuck in place while we deal with these ones. Alright, so you are out of attacks, that's fine. Fuck yes. You've done your job, that's fine too. I guess you could poke one of them for minor damage if you went down there, but you're probably okay just staying up here. Most of them just worried about the ravens maybe taking a shot if they're out of range, or if, sorry, if they're not out of range, and if I misremember, and one of the Kuotoas does have a uh, ranged attack. But frightened means they can't come any closer to us, so that should keep them out of our hair. Ironic. So, in order to keep my Bual buff, I think that I need to knock one of them out. The rest can all die. You pounce. How far can you get? Can you get over to there? No. Get over to there, though. Pretty nice. Then you can hop on up there and attack that hunter. That seems like a pretty good use of your turn. Oh, that would knock him down? Hmm. Can I knock him to where I can loot him? That's better. Yeah. That can inflict bleed, so that's occasionally useful, I guess, to get advantage of attacks. I don't want you to take too much damage. Yeah, okay. Cannot reach. Uh, it's literally next to you. What if Shovel gets out of the way? Does that change anything? Oh, yeah, 
yeah, shovel was blocked. Fair enough, I guess. Okay, so we're going to knock out that Kuotoa, probably. And then deal with the hunter over there. Isn't there another one around? Let's see, there's that Kuotoa, that one, that one. I thought there... Yeah, okay, I knew there's one over there somewhere. Let's have a Starion... I'll run down here. Then maybe activate your bonus action dash. And then if we knock out the first one of them... Oh wait, he's got low Vitar squares, so his melee attack will probably kill. We don't want that. Okay. Fair enough, then. Let's have you blind that one. Or not. Let's have you blind that one. There we go. I love my advantage-making machines here. Well, so much for peace. How can you get down there safely? If you walk down here and then jump, will that do it? Turn on non-lethal. Okay, it's already on. Nope. Don't jump from the place where you take damage. Jump from the place where you won't take damage. Really? Is this that hard? Okay, knocked out. So you can keep on worshipping your now dead murder god, Buol. I mean, it didn't stop the humans worshipping Baal or whatever when he was dead, right? So fair's fair. Keep guessing. I'm gonna actually stick with my invisibility, I think, and do my dash to get up there. See if I can close in enough to finish that one off. That was all part of the plan. Yeah, ninety percent chance to kill. I like that. Bye forever, pal. And then as long as that one lives, we should be good. So now I can have maybe Ballista Can't stay idle. walk up there and fire an Eldritch Blast off at that one that is prone and frightened. Well, as I said, not that hard to fight. They're worth a shocking amount of XP, which we got for siding with uh, Buol before attacking them. We don't get a double count for killing them, but. I think I've mentioned before just how lopsided the amount of XP you get in this game is from some fights versus others. Are you not going to follow Le Boing Zell? Early game enemies are worth almost nothing, even if they're quite challenging, even if they're like bosses and mini-bosses. Late game ones, even if they're trivial things like these guys or like kobolds, are worth more XP than bosses pretty fast. And it's really more about numbers than it is about quality of enemies. A uh, you know, large group of weak enemies like this is always worth a lot more than a single big strong enemy in this game. These staves are things that Kuotoa kind of used to have in older editions, too, that could you know, grasp a person. I don't think they do that anymore. So this sickle of Buol uh, lets one person who wields it have the Buol's Blessing thing, but that's that's worthless. Having everyone in the party have this Buol's Blessing thing all the time with whatever weapon they want is also almost worthless, but not quite worthless. And I look forward to just playing around with that and getting some value out of it, because, again, I've never been able to do that before. So, just want to try new things on this run. Boo all was carrying camp supplies. It's kind of interesting. I feel like I remember there being items around here on the altar. Is that worth anything? I mean, a tiny bit. Strange that their crossbows are of ordinary make, whereas their other weapons are things made of the you know, fish bones and conch shells and stuff like that. I guess it would have been a needless complexity to try to make up some new fishy crossbow for them to use. After this video had first debuted on Patreon, a supporter pointed out a secret item that I had missed in this area. 
here's an addendum to show where to get that. So there's a treasure chest over there, and there's also a potion of greater healing. My plan is going to be to jump over there, and then go into turn-based mode. Then, before these things go off, I can pick up that potion of healing. I can pick up that chest. And I can... And then disarm it. We get a bit of mo money and this unique chain shirt. Now, a chain shirt is a terrible type of armor. Just awful AC. And the effect here, I would say, is not very good. So, I will just take that and sell that, I think. Alright, back to the adventure I was doing before I found out about this item. Now, as I leave this place, which I'll do once I've taken care of one or two other things here, I want to make absolutely sure that Gut, or Glut rather, comes with me. See, he can bug sometimes get stuck down here forever, and then you lose out in having him as your little follower, which is not so fun, because he's a, a great companion to have. And I want to play around with different kinds of animal creatures that I can get as spore servants and whatnot. This message here is a little bit sad. It's one of the tiefling kids. Might be worth a look. Trying to write a letter to his dad in hell. Either because he's dead or because he's still stuck in hell. I'm not sure which. But the Styx is the river that runs through several of the underworld realms. Including Avernus in you know, the Nine Hells, but also including some of the Abyss. So it connects them, and that's one reason that the devils and demons fight there. Donnie, I think, is the one who doesn't actually talk, but I guess he's capable of writing. Sad that we can't do anything with it, so we can't bring it back to Donnie or like find his dad anywhere that I can think of or anything like that. Neat little statue there. Starfishes are surprisingly valuable. And over here we find a book that maybe influenced uh, this cult of Bual, or perhaps uh, the Red Cap itself. Which reveals the rather trite motives of Baal worshippers. Alchemy ingredients, okay. Take it. Can I just read the book? Come on. So basically, they just murder because it physically feels good. And, like, that's just pretty much the lamest motive for worshipping a murder god. Just, like, get a girlfriend, boyfriend, or other. Jeez. So Ballista is not at all impressed by the cult of this murder god or any other murder god. He'll be quite disappointed to find out that he'd been one of these freaks in his previous life. Glad not such a loser anymore. Some might think that maybe it was kind of a dark urge influence thing for him to want to just dispose of Shadowheart in this way. And maybe that did also influence his decision-making here, but he also just kind of thinks that she, as a Shar worshipper, deserved it. And Shar deserves to be ridiculed in this fashion. Silverware. I don't mind if I do. I forgot if I mentioned that the Underdark used to be Shar's domain, so killing her worshippers here is just kind of trying to further add insult to injury. Alright, I should go back to my kitted town and collect the treasure that I forgot to grab last time, and then on with the rest of our adventure next time. Thank you for watching, everyone. And a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Frank Maidens, Master Knight DH, Jackie, and Lino, George Grin, Travis, Carlo Andrea97, Cthulhu's Mom, Gregory, William Wakefield, Danny Hall, Jeffrey Morse, Just Becca, Jack, Austin Livingston, Mashas01, Jacob Marshall, New Vienna, Till Fisher, Latanex, Discord Colossus, Nicholas Schmuck, Kostya Nesterovich, Val the Great, Luke Frederick Brune, Goman Blackrock, Dodo King 4, Marcin Bialik, Techno Waffle, Mavith, Nebular, I Loop, Michael Francis, Emperor Kong 420, and Robin Maki. Have a great day, everyone.